Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the different guys that I think could win the Heisman out of the Big Ten. We'll go through all the conferences throughout the week, get to I think the Big 12 probably tomorrow and then the ACC to finish it out on Thursday. But now I want to get to a Top 10 Tuesday and it's going to be a contentious one. I can almost feel it. Uh, the best rivalries in college football is one that is a battle that people have been fighting for quite some time. And uh, it is one that I've had a pretty firm take on for quite some time, but I wanted to get it out there. I've done a segment on what I think the best one is, but we'll get to that at the very end. Um, let's b start to break this down. And I think for me, it starts Alabama, Tennessee. I think this is one that, you know, third Saturday in October, this one is just special. You have the cigar smoke that fills the stadium after the game. It's always a really fun game, even, you know, in a era where, Tennessee's kind of getting abused a little bit, at least in the past, you know, uh, decade with uh, Bama's run. But the reality is, no matter what, every single time, this one has energy around it. Even if Bama's coming in totally undefeated and Tennessee's coming in kind of limping, this one still has juice. Um, and frankly, I think both of these programs are going in a direction where it's going to get more interesting. I think Bama's taking, you know, not a huge step back by any means, which is actually something I want to get into tomorrow. Um, but I think Tennessee is taking steps forward. So this, this rivalry not only is great right now, but I think it could get even better throughout the next couple of years. Um, then I got Florida State, Florida. Uh, I think this is obviously one that's just incredible. When you go look back at last year in Gainesville, it was special. That place was absolutely incredible all throughout that game. And especially down the stretch of that game when they were, you know, trying to win a really tough one, it was just off the walls wild. Um, these are two programs that have pretty much as much history as really anyone. Um, they both have been at the mountaintops. They both climbed over each other to get there. Um, and they did it really actually pretty close to each other where, you know, uh, Florida won in 08, 09, and then you had Florida State at the very top in 2013 um, and 2014 right back in the playoffs. So these teams have been in the conversation not to uh, – long ago and I think they will be for quite some time to come obviously Florida going through kind of a tough stretch right now but I think they'll be able to find their footing at least in the next three to five years and this game will get back to being what it should be which is one of the biggest games of the entire year um and then I had Notre Dame USC uh Colin Coward is wrong this game should be played forever there's no two ways about that Th these are two programs that are as iconic as they get they are blue bloods and they are just incredible and they always play in iconic stadiums whether it's uh, USC out there in the Coliseum or it's Notre Dame Stadium those are two really really special places to play and these two uniforms playing on those fields is always a really cool thing to watch so there's always going to be a little bit of intensity a little bit faster play both teams just playing a little bit harder and hopefully at some point it's some it's a maybe even a conference rivalry in the Big Ten at some point but Notre Dame's holding out uh, pretty aggressively to be that standalone uh, independent um, but Let's move on here. Texas, Texas A&M is one that some of you might be a little bit unaware of. Um, if you're a little bit on the younger side, frankly, I very barely remember this one, if I'm being totally honest. But I know what this one's about um, because I am firmly in the uh, camp of, I've, I've talked about this on here before, I grew up a Texas fan, so I have you know experienced a lot of the conversations between these two fan bases and they hate each other. Um, they don't just hate the other team. They hate everything about what the other fan base is and the people that they are. It's absolutely insane. So the uh, the atmosphere in this one this year is going to shock some people. And fr uh, frankly, I think Kyle Field should look into possibly reinforcing some of the parts of their stadium, some of the foundation, because it's going to be absolutely insane in that stadium. There's no two ways about that. Um, and then you have Florida State, Miami. I think this one... Uh, it takes the cake over Florida State, Florida to me because it's a conference battle, because they have that, you know, incredible history of battling in the same conference for quite some time. And two programs that have so much history and hatred and a, a million iconic players throughout their history. So I love all of the Florida rivalries. I think they're all really, really incredible games, whether it's Florida State, Miami or Florida State, Florida, or Florida, Miami. Um, I think they're all really, really awesome. But this one takes the cake to me, uh, if I'm being totally honest. But let's get to the top five. And these are the special ones, in my opinion. 
the largest outdoor cocktail party is one that is just different. Um, it's one of the ones that I've been to on this list. Georgia, Florida is one of those when you step into the stadium, it is special. Uh, you feel that energy even, you know, in a stadium that is an NFL stadium uh, in a city that neither of the schools are uh, quartered out of. It's still wild. Um, and obviously this one has leaned a little bit more toward Georgia's direction recently, but it doesn't change that Florida fans walk in there with a ton of confidence, walk in there with a ton of energy, and it's going to be really, really incredible uh, to watch this kind of develop because although Florida is going through a rough patch like we just talked about, I think they find their footing, and I think this game becomes what the Florida State-Florida one should be, which is one of the biggest games in the entire year. So it'll be fascinating to watch that. Then I got Army-Navy. Um, this one's always special. This is the history, two programs, the two schools in particular, the, the people playing in this game are special people. I think we can all agree on that. Um, formerly, it was on a standalone weekend. It should be on a standalone weekend, but that's beside the point. Um, this one is just different than any other game. I, I think every time uh, you have the Army-Navy game, you know that probably 90% of college football fans are going to be t uh, tuned in and probably 90% of those people have no interest in who wins, really. Uh, they don't necessarily care if it's Army or if it's Navy. They just want to see good football and they want to watch this game as a standalone game on that Saturday because it's a really special one, not only because of what happens on the field, but because of who these people are off the field, but also the just majesty around this one is just remarkable. Um, but let's jump into the top three here and I got the Iron Bowl at three. I think this one is the battle in uh, Alabama is obviously going to be huge, and football is life in Alabama. I can promise you that. These two fan bases hate the, each other just so aggressively. Um, the history against that between them is as for real as it gets. Uh, I remember Bama fans, you know, burning down Toomer's uh, corner uh, over there in Auburn. There have been just some really remarkable things that have happened throughout this uh, rivalry. But also, on the field, it's been just insane. Um, the kick six was one of the greatest endings that we've ever seen. Obviously, last year, even, 4th uh, and 31 was just ridiculous. So, it always gives us those great endings. Bryce Young had a very, very incredible drive to end one of those games his final year. So, it, it's just wild what this game gives us every single year. So, Auburn just never lets Bama off easy, and that's what always makes for a good rivalry game. So absolutely love that one. The game, I have at number two, and I feel like people are realizing what I have at number one. But Ohio State-Michigan checks almost every single box when you talk about a rivalry game. The historic programs, two blue bloods, the atmosphere is ridiculous. The unadulterated hate of just crossing out M's for an entire month around Columbus is just insane. It's all college football. It's all absolutely beautiful. I think this game is always has stakes as well, which is another huge draw to this game where every single year, you know, they break down the biggest games that will define the college football playoff. This is always in the top three or four because it's so important because it usually decides who goes to the Big Ten championship and who maybe makes it to the playoff. So it's one of those games that not only are they, you know, crazy games that are really intense, but it's between two teams that have a ton riding on the season, at least the majority of the time. Sometimes it's Ohio State running away with a thing and Michigan trying to play spoiler. You know, sometimes it's the other way around. It's very rarely been the other way around, frankly, but... Um, this one's just awesome and will forever be iconic. I think, frankly, I'd argue it's getting into what is going to be its heyday because I think Michigan is finding its way up. I think they're going to be a program that is going to be right at the top for a very, very long time because of the way that they built that program. And Ohio State's Ohio State. They're going to be in the conversation most years. And this one is going to be as intense as you've ever seen it over the next decade. I feel fairly confident about that, if I'm being totally honest. But then, number one, Red River Rivalry, and I've done this take on here. If you want to go see my full take, it's somewhere on the Hot Take Thursday segment uh, throughout the um, page, but this one's special. I'll be totally honest. I, I think this one is just absolutely different, and frankly, I don't think this will be a hot take two or three years down the road once we see it uh, around, you know, once SEC fans see it, and once we see it on national television as an SEC game. I don't think people will question that this is the best rivalry in the sport, and there's so many different reasons why it's special, but the one that I zero in, zero in on on the Hot Take Thursday and the one that I really want to talk about right now is 
the atmosphere around this game is different than any other football game played in any other place ever. Truly, it's it's totally different. The 50-50 split at the 50-yard line is something that doesn't happen in any other college football game or really any other football game. Um, the Texas Fair right outside where literally Josh Pate tells stories about he, how he walked out the door, got a funnel cake at halftime, and then walked back in and watched the second half of what was an incredible game where Caleb Williams came to life uh, for Oklahoma. So this one is just different um, inside and outside the stadium. So I think when you talk about all of the rivalries across college football, you talk about all the incredible ones, and there are ones that, you know, year over year have had higher stakes than this one because Texas has not been that great of a team over the last uh, decade or so. But the reality is this one is still special every single year. It still gives us so much every single year, and there's never a game that is decided by a ton of points. Obviously, there are, there are anomalies here and there, but for the majority, there are games that are decided by three, decided by seven, decided by four. It's just it's incredible what these uh, two teams have in the tank when they walk into that stadium, and it's going to be special for a really long time. Um, these two uh, programs going into the SEC, becoming better by the day pretty much, I think it's going to be just insane over the next couple of years. So I understand that people are going to be a little bit against me on that, but the Red River uh, showdown, the Red River rivalry, the Red River whatever you want to call it, it's special. Um, it's totally different than whatever else we have in college football. And frankly, it is as unadulterated of an atmosphere in college football as I can possibly find. If I was trying to define college football in one picture, in one atmosphere, it would be there. Um, there's no doubt in my mind. So obviously that's going to be a take that uh, people don't love. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that one's the most special, not only because of what happens on the field, but because of the atmosphere that surrounds it. But that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It does make a huge difference. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all of the social pages for all of the content updates you could possibly need. We just have incredible people doing really, really good work across every single sport you could possibly want. So come on over to GSMC. We have you totally totally covered in the world of sports, but thank you once again for listening and I will see you guys tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.